Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches! Retro Review, episode 31! Tonight we're reviewing Cruel Intentions! Cruel Intentions. Thanks to Selma Blair's fabulous Instagram. Oh, yeah. We found out that they're re-releasing Cruel Intentions in theaters starting March 22nd. For a week. For a week. For the 20th anniversary. Can't believe it's been 20 years. Jesus Christ. Holy, holy fuck crap. My, fuck my drag, right? Fuck my drag. <laughs> Whatever. I loved growing up in the 90s. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs> they have no Kids idea what we days, have to, yeah. They don't know what we had to put up with. <laughs> How long login oh start up? Oh. <laughs> Emails for geeks and pedophiles. <laughs> Ronald, email is for geeks and pedophiles. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to talk about this very important film in my life. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, this movie came out when I was 13, yeah. primed for this drama and all of this. I mean, I still to this day, we looked up because I was like, wait, is this movie rated R? Oh, yeah. And I was like, it must have been because it was so scandalous for me at the time. And I definitely saw it in the theater. And I don't know how that happened. <laughs> they had already changed the law that you had to have, like, the adult buy you the ticket. Yes. Right? I think so. Maybe, like, you bought probably tickets. Probably just bought a ticket for something else for, and then like, went to... The Matrix or something. Yeah. Was that rated R? I don't know. Probably bought tickets for something. Yeah. I mean, this movie is scandalous for a young child. Oh, yeah. I was scandalized. Oh, yeah. And I loved every second of it. I'm trying to remember, I don't remember the first time I saw it, because I was 11 when it came out, and I was too young for that. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm just like, a little 11 year old Andrew was not ready for Ryan Felipe's butt. <laughs> Good butt. <laughs> I mean, I was here for the equal opportunity, gratuitous nudity. It's actually. Actually, it was all male. Yeah. So here for it. Love it. Here for it. There's the shot. It's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> We're opening the door. Steamy, lit from beneath him, light coming from every orifice, towel around his shoulders. What? My ass? Oh. And then he turns around. Let me put on my bathing suit, girl. <laughs> Would you mind turning around so that I could put on my bathing suit? Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh my gosh. No, I was so deeply upset and saddened by this movie. Mm. They were so in love, and I was so upset. I was inconsolable. I, I vividly remember that, too. Being so upset at how unfair it was. Oh, yeah. That the end, I mean, we'll get there, and spoilers, and obviously if you haven't seen Cruel Intentions, oh, what yeah. are you doing with your life? Go to the theater right now. <laughs> Go to the theater and watch it, and then cry your eyes out like I did. I was inconsolable. I was, I remember. I was just so wrapped up in it. How did they make him so redeemable? In, like, I don't feel that way now. No. I mean, as like a little girl, you're like, oh, every, you can forgive anything. I Not know. that you were a little girl, but you know. You can forgive and forget, and yeah, consequences I, didn't seem I as guess, severe. Sure. Well, and I guess it just really seemed like, for some reason, I thought they were in love. Maybe it's that like naive childhood ideal. I mean, I think they were. Well, you also really get there in the end where it's like, oh, you love her. You yeah. just were ashamed to admit it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, no, he got played. When it was one of those like, oh, but if only, if only, if yes. only. Oh. It's like slightly Shakespearean tragedy. Well, sure. I mean, it's so it's obviously it's based on the book that Dangerous Liaisons is based on, which is also what Valmont is based on. Have you seen Valmont? Mm -mm. So it's Milos Forman's version of this. Oh. And Colin Firth is the Sebastian character. Oh, I need to watch this. <laughs> Yesterday. You defo should. I mean, it may be like, yeah. I think like, um, Perza Balk is the young, is Cecile, is like the young naive thing. And I remember watching it at the time and be like, this is so sexy. But then if I watch it now, I'd probably be like, she's very young. Yeah. That's upsetting. I don't know. There were some like rape there was adjacent. Certainly some, yeah, like sexual ass assault adjacent things that happen yeah. in this movie. Yeah. But I was like, here for it because it's not untrue. Like I was like, this is a very sure real example of things that happened. That is and very true. as a kid, it's maybe not such a great example because you're like, well, what happened? That's just what happens, right? That's what happens. Girls are just that's okay. But like watching it later, you're like, well, this is sort of a cautionary tale. Yeah. 
Oh, it's fully. So, Cruel Intentions. Yes, the 1999. Classic. Classic. I mean, this Change, movie was seminal in my childhood. <laughs> seminal. <laughs> so, I saw this movie. Inconsolably upset and crying, came home and was like, Mom, they were so loved. And he died. And, oh my God, what do I do? I'm just... Inconsolable! And she was like, oh, you need to watch something else. Why don't you watch Easy Rider? I loved that movie growing up. Have you not seen Easy Rider? No. Oh my god! <laughs> so much more fucked! Oh no! <laughs> so much more rated R! Oh. So much as tragic. Like it basically ends essentially the same way with people dying in an automobile accident, like <laughs> justly. And I was like, ah! Mom! Oh my god! So then I was like, Sure. <laughs> Inconsolably sad. Oh, no. Sarah Michelle Gellar, the true star of this movie. In English, I'll fuck your brains out. At the time, I was obsessed with Buffy. Obsessed with Buffy. It was my life. So, I, that was probably the reason I went and saw this. Probably. In the first place. Sure. So it was so like, like seeing her be so not Buffy and yeah, so different so. and it was like, Fabulous. I remember being like, oh my god, like, I hate her, but I love her. It really is. That's the big, like, she is so amazing. Yeah. You fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking idiot. Cool. <laughs> Every <laughs> time, just, mm, yeah. Every time anyone closes a door or leaves a room, oh, god, fucking idiots. Oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, great. Mm. And Reese Witherspoon. Yep. And Young Reese Witherspoon, Ryan Felipe. And Ryan Felipe and Ryan, and Ryan Felipe's ass. And Ryan Felipe's ass. And Ryan Felipe's curly, curly hair. Oh my god! But then they tried to like mat it. Yeah. It was. It was like they were trying. I mean, maybe they were. They were trying to literally make him look like a wolf. <laughs> he was with the eyebrows. And the hair. I mean, he definitely that, was like that, like wicked smile of his. Oh yeah. He was very wolf-like. It was like the Twilight prequel, you know. It was like. Well, I mean, at a certain point, he's just dressed like Angel. He's got the trench coat and dress shoes, and like a ill-fitting V-neck sweater. And you're like, David Boreanaz, were you up for this part? And he's wandering through the streets. I'm like, is she just becoming a vampire? Like for the second half of the movie, I'm like, wait, is she just becoming a vampire? He's just wearing sunglasses all the time and like, oh. Maybe he is, and he faked his own death. <gasps> Love it. I mean, but I wouldn't be surprised if both him and Sarah Michelle Gellar are vampires. Maybe I just okay. have vampires on the mind. Buffy. Oh, but also that would be if they're really like, fabulous. if they're like, oh, we've been alive for two hundred years. And they're yeah. dead to us. Let's just mess with these pitiful humans. I I'm mean, like here for that though. Right? This like weird step incestuous <laughs> vampire yeah. manipulation romance throughout the centuries. Mm -hmm. I'd watch that show. I'd watch the shit out of that show. I would watch the shit out It'd of that so show. Good. Yes, it's Cruel Intentions meets vampires. <laughs> I'm in. And they live in like some fabulous old New York mansion where they've lived for 400 years. Yeah. That's why they have all this great real estate. And endless amounts of cash. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this idea. It'd be Ob so good. Obsessed. There's just so many 90s people in this movie. Tara Reid showing up as Swoozie Kurtz's daughter, his therapist's daughter. Oh, I didn't know who Swoozie Kurtz. That's her name, Swoozie Kurtz? Yeah, haven't we talked about this? I don't think so. Swoozie Kurtz, she's the, okay, what would you know her from? She's the opposing counsel in Liar Liar. Oh God. That's all like, it's been a long time since I've watched Liar Liar. Well, Swoozy Kurtz. I'm down for that though, too. Um, yeah. I'm kicking my ass! I'm... Do you mind? <laughs> I'm kicking my ass! Do you mind? I'm also really down for a remake of Liar Liar with Kate McKinnon. Mmm. I like it a lot. Yeah. I'm here for Kate McKinnon to remake all of all Jim of... Carrey's movies, yep. honestly. She'd be great in The Mask. I think you start with The Mask and then do Liar Liar. <laughs> You don't start with Once Bitten. <laughs> Joshua Jackson, who Andrew keeps being like, what's he, who's he from, what's up? Because you haven't watched Johnson's Creek, which still baffles my mind. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. not like, oh, I keep, like, 
shame on you. I'm just surprised. Well, you know, it I was, was such a big deal. I like wasn't allowed to, I don't think. Mm. And like I was too young. It was just like that little bit where it was like I wasn't allowed to watch it with the cool kids kind of thing. <laughs> oh, speaking of Dawson's Creek, apparently Katie Holmes was up for the Reese Witherspoon part and the producers really wanted her and the director was like, no, yeah. it's not going to work. And it wouldn't have. It would have been very different and bad. Bad. Reese and Ryan Felipe were dating at the time. Oh boy. Before, before they filmed. And then the director was like, oh, let me, let's, she's an actress, let's meet your girlfriend, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, oh my God, yes, you have to be in this movie. Wow. And then they got married like three months after they made this movie. Didn't you know they were married and had like two kids, three kids? I guess I did. In this case, it works. You know, sometimes when people are actually dating or in love in a movie, like the chemistry's weird and it doesn't yeah. work at all. But yeah. this, like, I think them being so emotionally connected, it really resonates. I'm sure it helped When a they're lot. breaking up in that scene, it's like, whew, girl. Yeah, that's they're, true. They're really breaking up. That's like, like they the... were both sobbing and like really got into it. That was definitely their best scene. Yeah. He, can we talk about him? Sure. He's not very good. No, he's pretty. Is he? Yes. He was pretty. He's pretty. He may not be your type. No, he was, not, though. He was your type? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I have a thing for blondes, but also, I remember thinking that he was so hot, but now I'm just like, what the fuck was I thinking? Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. He was, like, 1990s, mm -hmm. I'm 13 hot. Yes. Like, he was, like, pretty. In yeah, that, yeah. You know, oh, my God. Like, this, all the girls were in love with Leonardo DiCaprio. Adonis. Yeah. Well, that I never got. Never got. It just never happened for me. No. Never has, never will. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, wait, how have we gone this long without mentioning that Christine Bransky is- Oh my movie? god! Nice to see you again, Mrs. Caldwell. So apparently, Christine Bransky only agreed to do the movie because her daughters were huge fans of Buffy. And they were like, oh mom, it would be so cool if you work with Sarah Michelle Gellar! Oh my god, I love I it. Like, love that. Yeah. I mean, oh my god, can we talk about Selma Blair and this, like, our introduction to the two of them, where Christine Bransky is just this goddess of, like, oh, Upper East Side fabulosity. Yes, in a Suit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then there's Selma Blair in this like fucking koala shirt, legs askew. Of course, always. She's got a real legs open policy. Yeah. It's just there's so many choices that she's making. I don't know what they are. No. My dad took me on a trip to Australia. Thanks. My father took me on a trip to Australia. How are things down under? Blossoming, I hope. Sebastian. Is she acts like she's eight? Or like, like just that arrested, she hasn't matured yet. Like arrested development. Like maybe they cast her because the character's supposed to be younger, but they cast her, but she's acting even younger. It's yeah. very weird. Yeah. It's like a very odd. I don't know. It works. Like because she's so funny and weird sure. and fabulous. But it's weird. But you like don't know because she's so vulnerable and may or may not be on the spectrum. I mean, I don't think that was the intent of the movie. No. I don't think they said, play it like you're on the spectrum. No, I think they were just like, play it like you're a child still. Play it childlike. But it comes off as, are you capable of making adult decisions like you seem like a... I mean, the answer is no, regardless. It's just so you don't know how to feel about how she feels about it. It's hard to determine her agency. It's, it's very hard to determine. That that's the truth. That is the truth. What is her agency? I want to know. I mean, obviously she's being abused and manipulated and that's horrible, but, and yet she seems to be happy to get out from under her mom's thumb and like right. experiencing these new things. And in many ways they open a lot of doors for her. Cecile, you had an orgasm. I did. You're becoming a woman. I'm so proud of you. I am? <laughs> like to grow up sure so you're like in this weird place of like no but maybe as like yikes uh, as this is she does have just like a a moment of that's what an orgasm is and right. that's she's great she's teaching her things that her parents are not like that are, she's not learning in other ways yeah. she's very ill-equipped obviously to be an adult yeah and so for all of sarah michelle geller's horribleness and all of it she really is teaching her things it's true and doesn't shame her for it she's like no. girl go get it yeah they do have an interesting relationship yes that is very one-sided in many ways but i think at, on some level sarah michelle geller is excited to teach her yeah, something absolutely it's and like a little pet it's like a little pet but she really is teaching her things that she should know that her parents why is she eight, acting like an eight-year-old that's fair this is not okay yes 
I do wish there was a conversation about condoms. Yeah. I was real confused about that. Yeah. I think Ryan's got it covered. Do so you sure. think he's probably pretty safe? I would hope so. I would hope so. You know, movies never talk about that stuff. I know. Even ones that are pretty real. I guess it just would have been fun if they had like a communal condom drawer. Oh, that would have been fun. Or something where it's like, oh, like, you know, Here's the... you know make a make a withdrawal. Yeah, <laughs> you know, something like, fun. Yeah. Just bring just it like up. Just like a weird little, it's like, it. it's like a candy machine, but that they take condoms out of. Oh my god, I love it. it. It's a gumball machine. Yeah. And they put in their bet money or their curse jar money, whatever the yes, fuck it is, right? Yes. And to get it, that'd be fun. It's weird. It is weird. So anyway. I think it would have been a lot easier if she was just kind of like a naive right. girl who didn't act like she was eight. But it wouldn't have been as interesting. No. Peace out. Ugh. Peace out, moron. She's definitely my favorite in terms of just like, what's this? <laughs> I mean, she's the only one in the movie that you're like, what's this though? Yeah. Everyone else is pretty straightforward. Yeah, and like somewhat boring. Like I actually find Ryan Felipe and Reese Witherspoon to be very boring. Oh, well, they're very boring. Very boring. So, so it's just like Sarah Michelle Gellar, Christine Baranski, yes. <laughs> Joshua Jackson. And so, well, yes. Can we talk? I don't know how I didn't realize Remember? I was gay sooner. <laughs> With the butt scene and then, well, you know, I wish there was like a a like better if, gay? Well, if this movie had been made a little later, mm -hmm. it would have been more of a plot line, right? Sure. Like, it's just sort of a thing. I mean, I remember thinking, and I still think it's a pretty big deal that there was just an out gay character. That's like, true. Like, Judge Production's just out. I he, guess that's true. I mean, we don't really see him interact with a bunch of other people, but he's not hiding it. Right. Like, and obviously Greg is. Right. Like, they show that, obviously. Yes. So, I assume that he's out. I mean, he has a fucking bronze sculpture of like men fucking or whatever, like on his nightstand. He's pretty out. So that was like refreshing. Yes. Even yes. though there's some like, you know, questionable things. Um, yeah. Which was just a, a symptom of the 90s. Like, not to apologize for it, but it just, like them using the word bag and like that oh, kind of sure. stuff. Like, oh, you're a pussy. Like, that was all very much just what people were saying. Yes. That wasn't even as problematic as the no. emotional blackmail of sure. how come Cruel Intentions and Love, Simon have like similar plot points. Right. I remember being like very surprised and refreshed that Joshua Jackson was just gay. Yeah. Ryan Felipe doesn't really rag on him for it. He just is. Oh no, yeah. Like, it's, it was just an interesting take, particularly for that time. Absolutely. I would say. I agree. And I his agree. frosted blonde hair. Oh boy, it's too much. Oh my god, he's doing his best Keeper Sutherland, and I was like, uh-huh. I fucking love Joshua Jackson. Obsessed. Should've been called Pacey's Pond. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. I mean, I get it. Because <laughs> Dawson sucks. <laughs> he's probably telling you the truth. I mean, the man can barely write out a grocery list, let alone a letter. What was I thinking? Oh, but I'm also talking about how cute Greg is. Oh my god, Greg is so cute. His blue eyes and just like... Oh, he was totally like, hot. That sweater on the beach, I was like, yes, sir. He was the hottest one in the movie. Absolutely. Probably also because he seemed the oldest. <laughs> he did seem the most adult. Yeah. At least 12 year old like. Um, I wanted to see when he hung up with Ryan Felipe and then went cruising at the beach bathrooms because I'm pretty right? sure that's what they were setting up. Right? Where's his spinoff? Right? I really would have liked yeah. to come back to Greg yeah. and to come back to Joshua Jackson honestly. I was like here for more of this. I'm also here for like a gay cruel intention. Ooh. You know, where it's like, oh, and then like the football guy like hooks up with whatever and then like goes cruising in the party. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Some, you know, guy that like is convinced he's straight. You know what I mean? Like that's the bet instead of, oh, I'm trying mm. to keep my virtue. Sure. I'm not gay. Right. Oh, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'll show you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Here for that being the bet. Sure. But yes, Christine Baranski looking the same. Oh, yeah. It's been 20 years. It's crazy. She's a goddess. I fucking love her so much. And with Ronald being so black. <laughs> Brown sugar. No sugar. <laughs> She's so young and he's so black. Uh, brown sugar. No sugar. Can we talk about Sarah Michelle Gellar? Yes. And her, oh my god, her first outfit. This like corseted bra cup. Yep. Bra satin bra cup corset with like a lacy side and a long sort of Al Capone pinstripe suit. I was here for this. I yeah. mean, this look is iconic. Yeah. But like there's some looks in this that you're like, oh, 
Ugh, this aged badly. But yeah. that one, no. I mean, we there was one where I, I literally said, did she take this out of Joan Crawford's closet? Well, we'll get into that one. Okay. <laughs> that was the, the most like, what? Because it didn't seem 90s. No. And it didn't seem her. No. It felt like she got it out of her mom's closet. Blush corseted negligee? Yeah, it was weird, like floof. Like, it fit really, really wrong. Really poorly. So I thought, oh, did she get this out of her mom's mom. closet? But no. We never find out. No. But maybe that's just a, a little nugget from the sure. costume designer. Sure. Just stick it in there. She's feeling really vulnerable right now. So she goes into her mom's closet. Oh my God. Tries to look mature. Oh, I want that scene. Right? I did want to see behind the curtain with yes, her. Yes, yes. Like, just a little bit. I always remember feeling bad for her, which yeah. is really remarkable. Yeah. Can we talk about the curtains? Like, puddling on the floor. It's oozing. This is why I'm like, okay, so they're vampires. Like, these oozing blood <laughs> curtains to keep all the light out. She sleeps, everything has, like, a canopy with, like, shades. Her weird, like, Versailles opulent trundle bed. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves me, and I intend to keep, keep it that way. Everybody loves me, and I intend to keep it that way. I thought this was the most sort of powerful scene for her. She gives a whole speech to Ryan Felipe about, because Ryan Felipe is like, oh, I'm feeling bad about what we're doing and whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's all right for guys like you in court to fuck everyone, but when I do it, I get dumped for innocent little twits like Cecile. God forbid I exude confidence and enjoy sex. You in court can sleep around with anybody and fuck off and just because I happen to like sex and everything, that makes me a slut, so I have to pretend to be oh Marsha fucking God. Brady. I'm the Marsha fucking Brady of the Upper East Side and sometimes I want to kill myself. Do you think I like having to pretend this all the time? This right. is fucked. And like the double standard of that and I was like, that was a really good speech. It was. Do you think I relish the fact that I have to act like Mary Sunshine 24-7 so I can be considered a lady? I was into that scene. Yeah. I'm also into her speech later where she's a badass bitch. Oh. It's just like, oh no, little boy. <laughs> You are my plaything. You are purely my toy. Well, and that's why, like, I feel bad for her at the end, but also I'm like, she's fine. Oh. <laughs> she'll spin this. She, she'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> also, she's a total bitch. <laughs> oh, yes. You're just a toy, Sebastian. A little toy I like to play with. But yes, the plot starts to unfold with... Uh, Seventeen magazine that Ryan Felipe is reading I, back to front. He's just so bored. He needs a real challenge. Yeah, he's right. Look at page sixty-four of this Seventeen magazine that I poured through. Like what? It was all folded and like, oh yeah, <laughs> looking for beauty tips. I already know the secret to getting rid of menstrual cramps. Thank you. <laughs> I know how to alleviate menstrual cramps. Thank you very much. Shut up and turn to page sixty-four. She's so good. She's, she's everything in this yeah. movie. Oh yeah. Absolutely everything. Everything. Uh, Reese Witherspoon has vowed, she, she's basically wearing a purity ring. I'm right. gonna wait till I'm married. And I don't know if she ever says married. Oh, I guess she says till so she's in love. Yeah, like it's all about like, well, they it's all kind older. Of older. She kind of put, does this whole thing where it's like, we're not, I don't think that we are old enough to like to really be in love. Be in love, yeah. And then I'm like, but so, then she just. Because she fell in love. It was so palpable in that ass. That was the moment. <gasps> that shot is so funny. <laughs> it's so homoerotic. It really is. And just tell me, I, I I know. I love it. This has to be the last like gratuitous '90s ass shot, right? Because that was such a thing in the '90s. Like, oh, girls really like guys' butts, or <laughs> guys really like guys' butts. Like, it was such a like Jean Claude showing sure. his butt. Oh my God. Arnold showing off his butt. You know, it was just such a thing. Yeah. That has now. Waned, right. I feel in main movies or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of true. Like if they made this movie today, obviously it would be very different. But like that would 100% not be in there. I'm like, okay, I know that I'm like not usually on board for remakes, mm. but I'm kind well, of. Well, there's already been three of them. So. Well, that's <laughs> true. Just, that's true. It doesn't have to be a Cruel Intentions remake. No. Still, just take the plot and then revamp it. But it has to be rated R. Can we just call it Queer Intentions? <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be amazing. But instead of gratuitous ass, I mean, we'd have that too. But then I, I want, Don't get me wrong. I want full frontal. It would be in there. <laughs> I want the swimming scene where it's just like, right a, no, it's not. Is Only it if it's ex? hard. Oh. Okay. So it'd be like, fair point, he'd fair be like enough. toweling himself off in the pool. Oh, oh. And then it would just be like a slow pan up. And then the other guy's yeah. job would just be like, <sighs> I like it, but I, I, 
Oh. I feel like if it came out. <laughs> a blowjob? <laughs> Want a blowjob? Good night, Cecile. Rude. I feel like if it came out even seven years ago, Alexander Skarsgård could be the rightfully bit part, right? Oh, he's too old. He's been too old for a while. You know what I mean? That kind of... I would love that, but like... Whenever him... he was young enough. Exactly. That, like... Yes. As the, like, manipulative, older, you know... I'm gonna show you a thing or two. Wow. <gasps> what if it's with Troy Sivan? Ooh, can he act? I don't know. Hmm. He can do the song for the credits. Love it. <laughs> or over the sex scene. Yes. Those are straight yes! <laughs> <gasps> yes! <laughs> Maybe he just does the soundtrack. That's fine. It has to it's be... just him and Robin. Oh my god. The whole soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm... then they do a duet. Yes! <laughs> I'm so on board. I fucking love it. Can you imagine the music video? Can you imagine? It'd be so good. Oh, it'd They'd be have so matching good. haircuts. Oh my god, right? Their hair would just be like this shocking, like, pale blonde. And they'd like, short... maybe wear the same outfit. And yeah. it'd be this weird, like, persona. Like, you know, like that old... Uh, Fellini movie? From Ingmar Bergman. Persona. Oh, who's me and who am I? And which one of us is which? Yes, it's like a mirror, but it's actually just the two of them. Yeah, uh-huh. Love this. <laughs> so we've just made a movie, cast it, created a best-selling soundtrack. soundtrack, and an amazing, like, Emmy award-winning music video. Love it. You're for it. So cruel and <laughs> reading the magazine, why I plan to wait. Boring, boring, boring. Yep. She has a boyfriend named Trevor. Going out for a year. Trevor understands. Trevor's a fag. Trevor's a fag. <laughs> then that's what's happening. <laughs> They're so good. It's, just, it's so good. Just so cavalier and cold. Trevor's a fag. And all this talk of Trevor backpacking through Europe. Oh yeah. We did write a side plot where Trevor just fucks his way through Europe. Yeah. Fucking hot Australians. <laughs> In, in hostels, backpacking. Love it. He's like, she might be waiting, but I'm not. <laughs> and his spinoff movie is just called Backpacking. <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god, I have it. Yes. Okay, so Queer <laughs> Intentions. It's so good. It's so good. With Taron Edgerton <gasps> as Ryan Felipe. Okay. I don't know if he has that raw sexuality, but maybe I said that like Moira Rose, that raw, raw sexuality. sexuality. <laughs> Alexis. Alexis, now is not the time for petty fogging. Say Taryn Edgerton and then little Twinkie Tom Holland as the like innocente. Maybe. But I don't know if that's. I feel like they'd both be the. They're both bottoms. One. Yeah. Like, they like can't. Need yeah. A, like, a, like a man. Yeah. But who still reads young. Right. They could be in college. Let's make it college. Sure. That's problematic. Freshman in college. Mm -hmm. First time away from home. And he's coming to terms with his sexuality. Oh my god, I love it. Thanks to the help of yet to be cast person. Keenan Lonsdale? Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. He I, could play manipulative, right? Right? like, psychopath. Sort of here for it. Yeah. I'm here for that. Okay, great. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the bet. Yes. Well, what do I win? I'll fuck your brains out. <laughs> oh my god. Can we actually just go back a bit? Sure. Because I don't think it really, the gravitas of the fact that our first introduction to our protagonist? U ultimate protagonist? By, like, by the end? Yeah. He's our protagonist? Is him internet slut shaming. Oh, yeah. A woman's daughter. Oh, yeah. Because she overcharged. I mean, the pettiness of it is very appropriate to the film. Sure. <laughs> and you're just like, what? I mean, the, the ad literally is saying, you are a slut. 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 Like, you're so aggressive and so ridiculous. And like, just, yeah. I wasn't clear the photos. I mean, obviously they didn't show them. I mean, it was her sort of like, topless, like, ooh, who mm. me? It wasn't like, here's right. all of the goodies. And yet now, I mean, if it took place 10 years later, then she would have been... A Kardashian. <laughs> Maybe she became one. You know, it's cruel intention. Sure. But yes, I mean, you're ve you're very much like, oh, he's a horrible person. He's a horrible person. And 
somehow, more so when I was a kid than it was this time rewatching yeah, yeah, yeah. it. He's redeemed by the end, and I'm like, oh, but he just needed to find love with she someone who was good, like cold, Reese Witherspoon. Cold heart. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's it's you know before we sort of had white guy finds himself fatigue. Yes. White straight guy finds himself yes. fatigue. Yeah. And and doesn't doesn't matter who he hurts along the way because right. it was his journey. Right. Like, you know, fuck you. But it's really Sarah Michelle Gellar's journey. I mean. Oh my God. All of it. It's her movie. Like, I'm surprised that it's not just Sarah Michelle Gellar. Right. I mean, like, the two of them, like, longingly looking at each other in the corner. Who is that? Right in the front. Nev Campbell? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Oh As God. her name is under her. Well, not really. I love it. Where is her name? Like, way over here. She got second billing to David Arquette? Yeah. <laughs> So oh, maybe see, it's alphabetical. It's alphabetical. Cox, yeah, Arquette, yeah, Cox, okay. 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I'll allow it. Wait. What? Is that how Courtney Cox and David Arquette met? Yeah. They met on screen. <laughs> wow. And we get to meet Aunt Helen, oh who's Louise Fletcher. From, she's Nurse Ratchet from One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. You've seen One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. You haven't? <laughs> they don't make you watch it in school? No. Yeah, I mean, it's very sad. We watched it for reasons in school. I don't know why we got to watch so many, like, it's definitely rated R. In, like, in, like grade high, school? Like, high school. Oh. Yeah, we watched it in high school. Oh, I thought you meant in, like, film school. No. We watched it in high school, I guess, for, like, mental health. I don't know. It's a great movie. Milos Forman. Hey. Hey. There you go. That's weird. Because he did Belmont, and this is based on that, and yeah. Louis Fletcher is... Huh. But anyway... Yeah, she shows up. Oh, Sebastian's here. Fuck me and Helen. Helen. Hi. Sebastian. Oh, fuck me. And Helen. They're just such pricks. Yeah, they're terrible people. And yet you are uh, entertained by them, intrigued by them. Like I never, even this watch felt like, fuck them. I don't even want to. Mm, engage with this. No. It wasn't like a turn, turn this off, fuck them. It was just like, this is fascinating and yes. crazy. Yes. Because like, they're so upfront about it, I guess. I guess. Well, they never really destroy anyone. Right. Except for the girl that we're first introduced to at the very beginning of the movie. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah. When Swoozy Kurtz has her, like, end of the graduate moment, I'm just gonna knock on oh this class. God. I'm gonna get you. You're gonna pay for this. Ah! I really kind of want like a mixture of nymphomaniac and cruel intentions. Ooh. Just to really go for it. Because like this movie, while being rated R, yeah. doesn't really have a lot of sex. And it's like weird because they're like I mean it teenagers. does, it talks about it a lot. Talks about it a lot. Which is more than most teen movies. Absolutely. It's very graphic in its yes. language and in its discussion. And very much. But like wouldn't it have been fascinating if we just like are introduced to him I think and it would he's have... getting a blowjob under the table at like some restaurant? It would be a different movie. Sure. And it definitely wouldn't be able to be about high schoolers. I feel like no. they were it was rated R in just the right ways for it to be Absolutely. You know, but but a different movie. Particularly because if you're young enough then that you don't know shame. a lot of what they're right. talking about. That well that movie's just shame. just shame. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> but not as fun. This no. movie has the campy fun. Oh, it's campy. Can we talk about their picnic? It's iconic yeah. picnic hat. Oh and glasses? I mean... A fucking half of a papaya? This half of a papaya? These glasses with the white water bottle? Oh my god, and the fruit and... Oh yes, and I'm combing your hair. Right? Some headcase bulimics that he broke up with over 4th of July. Oh! Oh! What a loser she must be. Ow! Oh! Sorry. Well, in this iconic kiss, I mean, I remember this... I'm like... Pretty 100% sure this one best kiss at like the MTV movie awards oh, I'm sure, or whatever. It was I'm so sure. such a big deal. Well, so yeah, ironic. like lesbian kiss of right, you know, but it's a good kiss. It is a good kiss. You know, usually, well, they just finished that one off. Yep. <gasps> first things first. Shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Try Wink.com. Wait, well, you think something just different or something? Did you like forget? I like Winona. She's great. She's great. You're great. I feel like usually, or at least back in this era, like whenever they showed lesbian 
kisses. It was very, whoa, we're betting at a party and like, let's make out and have guys watching them or whatever. Like this, it's right, usually yes. very male gaze. That is very true, very male gaze. You know? And to be fair, this isn't a lesbian kiss. It's a girl on girl kiss. It's at right. most bisexual. At most it's bisexual, yes. Because I guess Selma Blair does seem to have like a little bit. She was into it. Yeah. In the end. But who knows what that says. I mean, I don't know how she identifies. But we don't even know if she's on the spectrum or not. <laughs> You're right. She's a what She's is, an enigma. What is Reese with her? She's a funny girl. What is she <laughs> saying? She's very strange. Oh my god, Dr. King is my favorite. favorite. <laughs> Public speaker? Right. You're like Civil rights Civil activist. Civil rights activist. It's based on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. King is my favorite. <laughs> that really got me. Yeah. But yeah, usually it's very, I mean, and not that this isn't like sexualized and like for men necessarily, but like it feels a little more cared for than that. It's somehow. like for them. It's for them to learn. And it's also like, obviously the filmmaking is still sexualized and for us and like, ooh, look at, I mean like the filming, the cinematography of this right. is like very male gaze, where it's just like, look at them making out, right. look at their tongues darting into each other. Yeah. But I think because the setup of it all mm -hmm. is just for them, it's then for it's them. not as creepy. It's their own moment. Yeah. And the iconic spittle. <laughs> yes, the like... I mean, it's iconic. Oh my god. Well, and I do love that Joshua Jackson's name is Blaine. Blaine? That's not a name! That's a household appliance! Blaine? His name is Blaine? Oh, that's a, that's a major appliance. That's not a name. Yeah, like Blaine and Court felt very 80s. We're going sure. to the country club. We're right. going to Court, Court and Blaine. Yeah. You know, like it felt, that felt kind of less 90s to that's me. That's true. We haven't even talked about Roland. Oh my God, Roland, Sean Patrick Thomas. Before he saves the last dance, <sighs> he gets in a fist fight in the middle of the street in Central Park. I mean, we'll get into the, the specifics of this. Is, does Save the Last Dance hold up? I feel like it holds up, right? I think it, I loved that movie. I loved that movie. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm not gonna lie, I have a thing for Julia Stiles. <laughs> In what way? I don't know, I've always loved her. I just really, I, like, I mean, as I a kid as well. growing up, I was just like, all about Julia Stiles. She was great. Also, she has like that masculine energy, like um, Karen Knightley does. I just always had crushes on like, the girls that were... Charlize, an Italian job. You knew your fabulous cunts even then. Yeah. Remember it down to you? That Julie Stiers, Freddie Prince Jr. were in college and were so in love, movie. Oh my god, we're so yeah. in love. And they listen to Al Green and he drinks her shampoo bottle. I don't. He's so upset because they break up and it smells like her, so he like oh drinks her, sham her whole shampoo bottle and then he has to get his stomach pump. Do you not remember this? No. Oh my god, you would have loved it. Oh, we should Freddie watch Prince that. Jr. I mean, there you go. You're in. Yep. Julie Stiles. I'm double in. I also wonder if The Prince and Me holds up. Because I also love that movie. I feel like probably. He's cute. I mean, the prince in me is basically fine. what Christmas Prince should have been. 100%. It basically is the Christmas Prince. Yep, but much better. Oh, yes, but Roland just getting on this bench and oh, right. playing her viola. I mean, viola? I, I was viola. What was it? It was a cello. Whatever. Viola sounded more like a vagina. Sure, there you go. We all know cello's the sexiest instrument. She just loves to keep her legs open. What is that? I'm just saying. Oh, oh. It's always like, in movies, it's always like, oh, the cello is so sexy. Because you've you got to like, straddle this. Hugging it. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Like a lot of, I don't know. Yeah. It's always Stroking like, your, the giant your thing between your legs. in front of you. You know, yeah. it's always like a thing. That's fair. Aside from like, bassoon. <laughs> but anyway, um, not sexy, unfortunately. Double reed instruments, not too sexy. No. But you really got to make that face. A roof. But anyway. <laughs> Always thought it was a little, like, what's Roland up to? How old is he? Why is he into Selma Blair? He's pre-Juilliard. So he's in high school. Or is it like a graduate program? It just always felt weird because she was, A, his student, but right. also like a child. Like very childlike. What and it's like it, this older man writing her? her love letters. Yeah. yeah. Well, like what is it about her exactly? Or really what is it about them? Because she's the... Innocent baby. I mean, that's right. like the the whole sort of crux of Sarah Michelle. You know, like every time, you know, I give the guys everything they want, and right. I'm sleeping around, and I like it. But then they dump me for these little, you know, dumb. pious, dumb, mm -hmm. you know, idiots. I don't know what was going on. It felt weird. It did feel a little weird. Like with Sebastian, you know why he's doing what he's doing, even though it's very wrong. Yes. 
Like, yes. you, you know what his motivation is. Yes. And therefore, you're like, well, I can understand this, even though I'm like, yeah, about it. Yeah. Thinking about Summer Blair's character, like, you know, 15 years from here, mm. looking back at, like, oh, God, remember when I lost my virginity to that guy who then died in the car accident? Like... <laughs> And then it turned out, wrote his journal how he was using me and manipulating me in order for my his stepsister to get back at her ex-boyfriend who I happened to be dating. That I didn't even really like. But then I was handing out, you know, bound printed books of his journal like, yes, bitch, take that. <laughs> Fuck you. I it love it. Kinkos. What was that? What was that? They were bound. Like they literally went to Kinko's and spent ten grand. That was a lot of money. We're probably expensive Kinko's just. Oh me. shit! To get it that. must have taken them three days at Kinko's. Oh also. my god! Oh yeah, print out all of those oh and have them all god. bound and like. Fucking! I am so glad I never have to go to Kinko's again. Right. Really, I think the story is that Sebastian and Catherine are made for each other. Oh yeah, that's the point. Essentially. I mean, he wrote my love. He's obsessed with her. I kind of, in some ways, wish that they just, again, became eternal vampires and just fucked with people throughout yeah. time yeah. because they were just like so obsessed with each other. Yeah. Did you bang her yet? No. Loser. Blow me. Call me later. Okay, bye. I mean, it was just like so good. <laughs> little flip phone. Oh my god, that flip phone. Little. Fuck her yet? I'm working on it. Loser. Blow me. Call me later. Okay. That. Phone. Like the leather, was it like a leather case? It was so shitty. It was yeah. so shitty. Yeah. Late 90s. There is something satisfying about a flip phone. I know. Just going. Apparently they're bringing the razor back. Oh no. But it's gonna well, be. Well now I'm thinking of like a horrible commercial for it. If they paid Justin Timberlake enough money, it was just like, we're bringing, bringing razor, razor back. back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be really perfect actually. Right? Yeah. Well and then, so they, you know, they're in the pool. This little boat. Oh, yeah, this the, tiny little, little yacht. I was like, is this a reference to like high society or something? Like some is, is the director like some Grace Kelly fan? Like what's going on? That was the only thing I could think of. I, it was so silly. He was really but silly. But then also the old Tammy wheelchair. wheelchair. So I was like, is this like Warm Springs? It was like some weird old Tammy Hearst Castle pool, you it, know? Yes. Oh. Was that from like Aunt Helen's late husband? Who, uh, like had the rickets or something? Right, like, like it, it was, was like a wooden She's like a gold wheelchair. digger and it was like he, you know. It was like a very vintage wheelchair yeah. in the pool area. I was very intrigued by this. Yeah. I was like, tell me more. I want to know all about it. It was sort of like, you haven't seen it. I don't even know why I'm going to say, remember that movie? But it was called Welcome to Wellville or something. And, and, uh. And Matthew Broderick was in it, and, and Anthony Hopkins, and he was playing Mr. Kellogg, you know, because he set up all those, like, wellness, weird, giving people enemas, eating diets, being weird in the woods. The Wellville Health Resort, a place for healing. Bend over a little bit, please. <laughs> definitely not It's a it. really weird movie that I definitely watched with my grandma, and it was giving me that vibe of, okay. like, go, you know, go out to the sanitarium and <laughs> for your... For, take your wooden wheelchair into the <laughs> for your, pool. For your TV or whatever, you know, like, it's gonna dry you out. <clears throat> you know, it was weird. And then it was like, oh, and then there's the desk. Yeah, yeah. It was like an outdoor steam shower behind. Well, it was an indoor pool, so yeah. maybe that that's why. That shot is just so funny to me. <laughs> and iconic. Iconic. As well as his black turtleneck Steve Jobs look. What oh my god, it? what was that? What was his outfits? Nothing fit. No, nothing. Why did nothing him. fit in the nineties? Everything was so big. Oh and god, his size. huge baggy slacks. And... So many slacks and dockers. Oh, everyone, god. everyone, girls wearing dockers mm. and dress pants. No. No. I mean, at one point he's wearing a sweater that just looked like it came from Express, <laughs> and I was just like, "What is this? Yeah, his character is rich. Why isn't he in like that's tailored true. designer clothes?" And just always these like dress shoes. Oh yeah. Like but like clunky dress shoes. Too big, business casual. Just like I don't know what this is. No. He's like trying to be an adult. I get that. Like, right. Oh, I'm trying to be like you know. But like he has money, so he should just be an adult wearing Gucci and Zenya and like whatever. And he should be in like tailored fucking suits. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we like trying to be sexy was. Oh my god. So oh my funny. god. Oh my god. Uh, oh, kicks her foot up just like oh god, uh, a uh, pinup girl. Oh, uh, it's so bad. Oh, I'm so sexy. You know what I'm saying? All right, show me sexy. Show me sexy, fine. I can be sexy. 
All right, show me sexy. Oh, is a little baby crying after the big bad book? <laughs> little baby's upset by the big bad book. Shut up. I was trying to, I couldn't quite see what book she was reading. I was I'm like, right. what pretentious book is she crying over in this field? Of like course. lounging under this willow, oh you God. know, with oh, 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 or whatever. I was like, what is this? I remember so, being so moved by it. Oh my God, I was so fucking into this movie. Oh, Reese Witherspoon, she oh, just, she's, is, so, she's so real and oh, good and God. feels. She really feels it all. I want to go sit under a tree and cry about a book. My little sassy brains. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, we haven't talked about her iconic funny face. Well, at first it's just sort of like, oh, and then, Oh my god, I mean this was so funny. I remember this genuinely making oh. me laugh, oh, yeah. obviously at the time, but like it was so good. I use this gif all the time. It's great. Mm. Greg throwing away all of his quote-unquote gay CDs, but then he can't throw away Judy she... at Carnegie. <laughs> oh, I have oh. to yeah, keep that. No, I have to keep that one. <laughs> I mean it was like so stupid. It's like the Evian and the... <laughs> I love my Kentucky son. I love my Kentucky son. <laughs> like, it was very much that. Yes. It was just like, oh my god, you guys, this is so stereotypical, but also hilarious. <laughs> so funny. And also made me like Greg more. I want to watch a whole fucking movie about Greg and Joshua Jackson, honestly. I mean, I want Greg to move past Joshua Jackson. Yes, but, but, I, yes. but I also enjoyed, and maybe this is petty, like, so Joshua Jackson is all in for this blackmail because Greg is this closeted, sort of bro-y, you know. Right. He would probably beat Joshua Jackson up if he had the chance, like, in front of his friends, like, right. oh, oh, fuck you, whatever, yeah. whatever. And so, while I feel bad for Greg because emotional blackmail is not cool, but I appreciated kind of Joshua Jackson's like, yeah, fuck you, suck my dick, and then I'm gonna blackmail you. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little bit. I wasn't mad about it. Were you not mad about it? It was, um, it was actually really upsetting this time. Oh, no! Just because it was like, I remember being in that space. Sure. When you're young and you're just like confused. I get it. It's rude both ways. But there was sure. something about Joshua just like owning his gayness so much to me that I appreciated for the time. Sure. Well, absolutely. I get that. It's just there's something about being so cavalier about, you know, toying with someone about outing them. Sure. And like blackmailing them. It's Sure. It's really fucked, and I think that that's why the it's, entire plot of Love, Simon was super fucked. Super fucked, but this movie's not trying to be an earnest, no. pro-homosexual, uh, like, yeah. Right. And so that's why it doesn't bother me, because the whole movie's fucked, and that's everyone's true. intentions are cruel, that's and I'm true. like, across the board, can yep. everyone be cruel? Yes. We're equally cruel to everybody, you know what I mean? It was sure. just sort of, like, sure. fascinating to me. I yeah. don't know. I get it. For 99? Yeah. Crazy. I want to fuck. And I don't. I want to fuck. Well, I, I don't. don't. <laughs> but then this breakup. Oh my God. I remember just being crushed by this because, oh my God, he feels like he has to break up with her to save her reputation and right. his. You're right. But it's like he's fallen. And he's been manipulated by he's been Sarah manipulated, Michelle Gellar. Obviously by Sarah Michelle Gellar because she's fabulous. <laughs> What's so funny? Silly rabbit. You know, like, oh, he loves her so much, like, so much he can't be with her because, like, yeah. oh, it's like all that, like, good 14 year old, like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. you yeah. guys, he yeah. fell on the sword for her. He loves her too, too much. much. I mean, so apparently, because they were dating at the time. Right. And apparently, it got really real. And that's why they're so, like, really, really, really crying. And she that's... slapped him and it wasn't rehearsed and they kept the take. And Which they... must be why then they kept the shitty sound. The sound is, like, peaky and weird. Don't fucking touch me, Sebastian! No! Apparently, Ryan Felipe said that, like, he was so upset and distraught after that he, like, went and barfed. Like, he was, like, too upset. They were just so in love! Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Sarah Michelle Gellar's silver outfit. Remember those mini skirts with like the little triangle opening? Yes. Oh boy, the 90s. Oh yeah. boy. Ah, uh, this metallic silver mini skirt with this sheer gray oh, yeah. top and just her bra. Yeah. 90s sort of banana clipped, like fallen palm tree hairdo. And I was just like, all of this. The strappy heels. 
all of it. So 90s. So nice. Very Charlotte Bruce. Oh my god. Um, you remember when Ryan Felipe was in Wish Upon? Yep. <laughs> he played sexy sax <laughs> for his daughter's friends and they were really turned on by it. Your dad's so sexy. He's oh my so god. Hot. Oh my god. <laughs> and his patchy beard. Yeah, oh god. Oh yeah. But yes, the big breakup. Mm. Ryan Felipe has vomited outside and then he comes back to be like, well, well I did it, you yeah. know, like, now what, what are you going to say about it? Now I broke her heart, you right. win, she's ruined. Yeah. Oh, silly rabbit. So oh, dismissive. No. Didn't you know? As she, yeah. like, drinks her champagne, right? and it's like, oh. Mmm, tastes great. Victory. Isn't it? That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. You broke up with the one thing you've ever loved just because I told you to. You gave up on the first person you ever loved because I threatened your reputation. I think it's the saddest thing I've ever heard. You're just my little toy. It's like, oh, fuck! That was very, it was reminding me of Princess Bride when he's like, You've been tracing me your whole life only to fail now. I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. She is very sadistic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, her and Count Rugen would probably really get along. <laughs> she would love to run the pit of despair with him. <laughs> I mean, throw in a couple of curtains. Yeah, and candelabras, you know, <laughs> a couple of day beds. We haven't even talked about his girdle. Oh my god, his girdle! <laughs> his prized possession. Right into my girdle. I'm not smart like you. <laughs> his like collage girdle, which yeah. I definitely had, guys. Definitely, it's pasted it. Didn't you? Did you have like a like a like a silly? I have a crush on so and so there with like pictures and you. No, I had a couple journals and I never wrote in them. The pictures are the key. You gotta break up the writing. Mm. It's a magazine, some scotch tape in there, a couple little doodles. You know, keep it fun. Mm. Visually interesting. Sure. Because other people are gonna read it? I, I mean. It's fun. Yeah. This journal. Um, of his conquest. Oh my gosh. And then he gives it to her with the note and is like, here's my prized possession. Right. Please forgive me, I'm nothing without you, blah, blah, yeah, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Then seemingly wanders the streets and sleeps outside. He like literally sleeps outside of her window. In, like, I a... feel you, <laughs> Joanna. Joanna. And then he's like, he's like in a rock formation and he just sort of like gets up, again, vampire, and wanders the streets some more. This is very odd. A big climactic moment. Catherine calls up Roland. You know, oh, oh my right. God, Sebastian's gone crazy. He hit yeah. me and then he ran out of here. I mean, what was her plan for this? To get them all fighting, I guess. I mean, I don't think she intended for Sebastian to be killed. No, I don't think I mean, so. How could you with this really realistic playing out of scenes of how this happens? It's so funny. But because then she then tells... Roland that he also, that Sebastian slept right, with fuck, Cecile, yeah. so like, I guess she was just stirring the shit and just being like, fuck you. And maybe have him punch you. Yeah, maybe he'll punch you and that'd be great. Yeah. After sleeping in the park, he's wandering the streets and then happens, happens to run, to into, run Roland. into Roland because he knew he was sleeping in the streets and then they start fighting. He's like, hey man. Well, you slept with, with Cecile, didn't you? Uh... Justin told me you fuck Cecile. Ronald, I'm sorry. Uh, punch! And then they start literally fighting the street. <laughs> At first they're on the sidewalk and you're like, okay. And then all of a sudden well, they're, they're in like, like a bike lane. In a weird thing. bike lane all yeah. of a sudden. They're yeah. punching each other. Hey man, calm it down. Then Reese Witherspoon finds them. Yep. Somehow. This... Well, because she's following him. She saw him in the window and she went oh to go God. after him. He's not a creep. He was outside my window the whole night. He didn't hold a boombox over his <laughs> arms, but you know, it was still romantic, right? I remember this white. Oh this white look, these pants, white pants, bold move for a girl in high school. Bold. You're still getting used to everything. And this white top, the nips just out. Yep. <laughs> I just remember being fascinated by this outfit. Yeah. Hey! Get out of there! And then oh my she God. just gets flung onto flung the street. Flung into the street. Oh, oh my God. I'm, am I in the street? What am I? Oh, I should really get up, shouldn't I? I mean, oh I'm my god, like, a cab's coming right at me. Oh shit! Ugh. I mean, it's just so stupid the way it's shot. It's yep. so good. He throws her out of the way. She like, like, does a flip out of the way almost. Yeah, but into another lane of oncoming traffic. Oh, for sure. You. She definitely would have gotten hit by a car too. And then he gets tumbled upon. I mean, they did do a good job of him sort of looking broken. Yes. 
but definitely not as dead as I remembered. No, also I was just kind of like, he wouldn't really be dead. I don't think. It would be really shit luck. So but that's like, what oh, makes it all the more tragic. I love you. I love you. But it would have been like, it, it, you know, it's like, oh, oh and then he landed on oh. his neck and it snapped or something, you know, like. Oh, give us a good death becomes her. Like, <laughs> I love you so much. <clears throat> Tears. Sobbing in the theater. <laughs> streaming down my face. So upset. They couldn't be in love. Oh my god, it's so unfair. <laughs> it happened. But yes, he has died, cut to his oh, funeral. Sure. Well, I mean, this this is just the most iconic. Oh, it's so, I mean, well, so first we're in the bathroom, oh, and yeah. she, I mean, the coke out of the rosary is just so oh. incredibly, amazingly rude. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I just turned to Jesus. <laughs> like, it's so good! Where do you get your strength? Whenever I feel the temptation of peer pressure, I turn to God and... He helps me through the problem. And then I love that Reese throws it back at her. Like, because obviously Cecile and her have talked. Oh, sure. I know it sounds really trite, but sometimes when I feel I can't go on, I turn to Jesus and he helps me through it. And so she's out there to give her eulogy. And then, I mean, this is so wacky, weird. This girl runs in. Oh my God, like, did you hear the gossip? You know, the book. The book. And everyone's running in. Uh, and then they all run out. Did you hear about it? Everyone's just running out into the street. And everyone's reading these, again, bound, printed, professionally printed at Kinko's books of his journal. Her face. And then she looks up and then ever, all the extras. Oh, my God. <gasps> it's really good. And then, of course, the you know the, the rosary hanging from her arm and the, the headmaster just... Right? Well, it's Cecile. Here you go. Here's yeah. your copy. Here's your copy. I mean, it felt weird because, like, obviously... She's in her, it? She's in it and her... And so maybe it's a... It kind of gives the audience a free pass. Like, well, she's accepted it. She's come to terms with whatever sure. happened to her and however she feels about it. And yeah. we're cleaning the slate of this... Hush, hush, let's not talk about it, maybe? Is maybe. that what they're saying? Maybe. Like, I'm going to own that I'm not the only one that fell for this and the only one that partook. And, like, I'm not the only one that, you know, got bamboozled and right. is having sex, etc. I mean, I do wish it was not only a damnation of Sarah Michelle Gellar, but because it should also very much be a damnation of Brian Felipe. Well, that's what's so weird. It would have made more sense if... Reese got the diary, yeah. didn't read it, mm. but was like, oh, he actually really does love me. Like, he's been out here. Like, maybe that's what happened. Mm. And then she goes, and then he dies, and then she reads the diary, and then she cools off on him and was like, oh, fuck. This was all super fucked. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened, and because then she's like, I'm going to expose all of it. I'm just going to put everything out there. Yeah, because I don't like the idea of her reading the letter and the journal and then being like, oh, I must go find him. Right? And forgive him. Fuck him. Yeah. So maybe we'll just say that she didn't read the journal. She was moved by it, yeah. the, by the gift. And then she reads it and she's like, totally fuck him, but I'll take your car, bitch. I mean, was that his will to give it to her? It was so weird. So weird. Did he give her the keys? But it wasn't with the journal. So no, I was... He died before they could talk. Right. I love you. Here's my car. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> the pink slips in the glove box. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But then she's... Sassily driving it. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, bitch. With yeah. the little diary, the, the original diary. Sunglasses. Oh my god. Yes. I don't where's she going? Where's she going? To a bittersweet symphony, April. Oh my god, this song. <laughs> do, 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 it's do, do, I mean it's just boo, boo, boo. iconically In part great. of my life. Oh my god. This song represents me bawling in a theater. <laughs> so upset. I remember thinking this was like the deepest, oh, most moving like, song. Oh my god, yes! The this Bittersweet is what, Symphony! This is what love is! <laughs> this is what it's all about, guys! Why does she keep the journal? Like, wh why is it sitting next to her? Because it represents him? It represents him See, in the that car? that implies that, like, she's, she's still, still in love with him. him. Well, you know what? I think she was. In some way. All of his flaws, or, you know, it's yeah. a reminder of all of the things that she went through with him. Sure. Her first love. Okay. The mistakes that she made. Sure. But Sarah Michelle Gellar, what do we think she's doing after oh, this? Oh, God. I mean, she gets Transfer expelled. Transfer schools. Yeah. <laughs> for cocaine possession. I mean, her parents buy her out of the cocaine possession. Oh, of course. It's fine. No big deal. Sponged off her record. They send her to, like, Oxford or something. You know, like a, a foreign school. Ooh. Where then she manipulates everyone there. Like that. 
We don't think she learned her lesson? Nah. No. No, she's gonna fuck with some French boys. Ooh, I like this. Yeah. Yeah, because then it goes full circle back to the, the French novel. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's great. Love it. Well, cheers to the 20th anniversary. Oh my god. I mean, I still had a lot of fun watching this movie. I had a lot of which fun. Which is weird to say, but it's like... It's more problematic than I remembered, yeah. and maybe we're just glazed by our memories of it. Mm. But I think it, for the time, was just... It was so iconic because it was so just in your face and like... I don't ugh. remember, and I don't even know if I can think of one now, of like a movie with teenagers... No. ...that discussed this, that talked about this stuff, that no. touched on these subjects. Like, maybe like a John Waters movie, but like, no. Right. Not that was like, meant for teenagers. No, and like, I mean, American Pie, like, sure they talk about it's sex, different. but it's very different. Now, do we think, when the journal comes out, uh -huh. that it also outs Greg? Oh, right! Or do we think Reese went through and sort of... But we don't necessarily know if he was in the journal. I mean, it's just his conquest. Right. He didn't, he didn't quest Greg, or did he? Yeah, I don't know, we don't know if it's like all of the mean, cruel things that he's done are in the journal. Because it's not necessarily the burn book. No. It seems to be his conquest. Yes. So I would like to think that Reese didn't happenstantially out Greg. Right. I don't think she would. That's not what it was about. No. We'll leave that for, for queer intentions. Yes. God, it's gonna be good. Cheers. Cheers. Again, to rhyme with his ass. <laughs>